You know, text analysis also, and text breakdown, is also fundamentally about how you see the person you're playing, right? Like, you're making choices about their geographic location, the nature of how the time period affects them, their profession, what their profession means to them, how that profession operates, so that if I go into a scene and I'm playing a lawyer, and I recognize this guy only became a lawyer because his dad was a lawyer, and I'm now in court, and I'm trying to convince a jury on my the biggest case of my life. There's a lot of external pressure that character put on themselves because of the nature of their history, right? And this is not just about winning this case. This is about being better than dad, being as good as dad, getting dad's approval. So now how do I hold on to that? Right? How do I hold on to that element of the analysis that I did when walking into the scene? Well, I got to put that analysis somewhere. And this is why the creation of layers and the nature of layers as triggers is so important. All a layer is is an actor's connection to the character, story, or circumstance. But within that layer, it triggers the sensation of the history that you created, the nature of how you look at that situation through your character's perspective and how that situation intimately impacts them moment to moment. And then, of course, because of that, you're automatically thrust into what they want if you're clear on it, if you make choices on it, right? So all that homework kind of shoots back in you when you layer your choices. If your choices just live as facts, as an element of historical understanding of the character's life, then, of course, you're going to lead to your brain. And what I love about the Brits and even the Aussies is that they have a sense that it's got to lead somewhere. It's got to lead to doing. Acting is doing. So if I'm sitting there in a sensation and I'm not doing something with it, then the nature of how I saw that situation was limited in my analysis, right? And that it's, it's somehow like... Part of the interesting element with a lot of working actors is you can see when they're in a thought about what to do because they didn't have a foundation for the guy or when they're doing something and then taking a risk to explore. Like, I'm very curious what Jack Nicholson did. Like, his, the nature of how he approached the material, he completely, first of all, had full ownership. That's the other thing about text analysis and text breakdown is it allows you to own the material but it also always led him to to doing something like i'm thinking of you know terms right where when we first see him and he falls out of the porsche and then he leans on the girl would one of you like to come on <laughs> come in and he's pleading you know i'm going in his mind he's got this great mischievous smile and he's looking at that and he is certain one of them is going to come in. Like, he is certain one of these women are going to come in. So I'm so curious how he looked at that scene. Because it's really the first time we really see that character, right? And how he approached the interaction between these two girls that he had met at some astronaut function, who, where he got sauced, right? He was sauced, got in his car, or got in their car, and then they had to drive him, drive him home and drop him off, and he still thinks, I'm certain one of you are going to come back to me. So it's like he's lassoing them. That action, that choice of trying to seduce, when you just fell on the concrete, you're bleeding, you're half in the bag, where does that choice come from to keep smiling through it? And then to go, fine. <laughs> like he just is like, once they reject him, he's like, fine, and then he just walks off. The nature of how he approached the moment-to-moment -moment life always led to him doing something, right? There was an energy that he was sending, an emotional and psychological energy that he was sending. His body always followed suit. And great actors find a way to take what they picked up from the character, take what their analysis told them, the foundation of the situation their character is in, and translate into doing. A lot of the time, I think we think that doing has to be an activity. Doing has to be something that we actually physically do. 
And when we get invested that the doing can be what we're sending, what we're doing to this person based on what we want. And that's why I do like Mamet and Practical Aesthetics. Because he's like, you hell, what the, the emotional foundation is, do something based on what you want. And you're going to find a level of interaction and energy in a moment-to-moment -moment life. But a lot of the time with young actors, they get so stuck on, well, I don't know what to do. And because of that, they're not making choices that really have them take their backstory, take the nature of their analysis, take how the character saw uh, this situation, and then turn it into a layer. They don't think, a lot of, I think, young actors don't think layers are, ne are necessities, right? They kind of go, I was told, and I've heard this a lot, I was told be myself. And I'm like, you know, who told you that? <laughs> you know? They're like, well, my agent, my casting director, every single director I had. And I'm like, well, what they want you to be is natural, right? Like, they're not looking for you to be acting, or as Susan Batson would say, acting and really performing it. They want a natural kind of connection. But the way in which the approach to text happened, they couldn't be natural. They're holding on to either an instinctive thing that's leading them to just saying the lines because that's all they feel the nature of what they needed to do was, or they went, they don't have a concept of what a layer can provide as a springboard into the scene. 